you make sure the belt's still on. Now all I'm gonna do is use this rubber mallet and whack this thing as hard as I can and it should spin free. It might not work the first or second or third time but it'll work. You gotta shock the bolt off. Here we go. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Chihu Garage. My name is Kikes. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today we got my 2000 Silverado and we're going to be swapping out the clutch fan and putting electric fans. So, let's get started. Now I know there's a ton of these videos on YouTube as we speak. That's how I got inspiration to do this. That's also how I learned a couple of things. But as far as this video, this is going to be specific to the 99 to 02 Silverados, the NBS Silverados. Some guys call them the bubble eyes or whatever. Not the cat eye. 03 to 07 classic. It's a little bit different. So I just want to make that clear before we get started. Now, just to explain a few things, as you can see, you notice my shroud doesn't reach the edge of the radiator. A couple of months ago, my radiator was leaking, so I decided that when I went to swap it out, I put the 34 inch radiator in. Uh, originally, it'll come with a 28 inch radiator. So that's what these holes are for. So usually the radiator will stop right here and then you got the fan shroud but I already opted to go with the bigger radiator because that's what the electric fans that I'm going to use are for. So you can see my uh, engineering zip ties down there just to hold the fan shroud in place and I've been driving it like this for a while and it's not loose or anything. Um, the top still bolts in, as you can see. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make that clear before we do anything. Okay, so to do this swap, this is what you're gonna need. You need some electric fans. This is actually off a GMT 900. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's the 07 to 2013 model trucks. That's why we got a 9 blade on one side, 7 blade on the other side. Of course you can use the regular fans that came off of any of these trucks or Tahoe Suburbans. They're just not going to be as cool as the 9 blade. Need a wiring harness. This is a OE one. OEM off of a like a Tahoe or Suburban or whatever trucks that came with electric fans you do not have to use this you can get the cheaper ones I got this one off of eBay and uh, pretty much power the big red wire you got the connectors for the two fans and then a ground ground and then you got your two pins your two wires that are gonna go into the ECM so if you don't use this you can use a cheaper one um, I wanted this to look OEM you need two bolts you need two bolts uh, there's M8 M8-125 by 30 Amazon so I have all this stuff linked in the description below and if you click on my link and you go to my Amazon store uh, I, I get a percentage off of that so feel free to click on anything in, in those links um, all the parts we ever used on my truck or my brother's truck it's linked in the description below 
And then for the 99 to 02 guys, like I said, I bought this kit off of BP Automotive. And it's the AC update kit. Now what this is gonna do is gonna allow our AC to also control the fans. Um, 99202s, we don't have a high pressure sensor. What we have is a switch. What that does is when it reads high pressure, it'll allow the recirc door to automatically turn on to get stuff circulating better. Um, I don't ever drive my car without turning that button on anyway, but buy this kit from BP Automotive. It too comes with the harness. And it even comes with a cap. Since you're gonna get rid of the, um, you're disconnecting the connector for the original switch and adding this sensor. Then there's a cap for the connector that you leave abandoned. And that's pretty much all you need. So, I think I'm going to check if all this stuff works before I start tearing the truck apart. One more thing I forgot to add that you also need. Um, you need a tuner to activate the f controls in the computer. So, if you don't have a tuner near you, like I do, I use uh, HP tuners. Um, you might have seen it in my other videos. But um, we'll get to that at the end of the video when everything's hooked up. But, um, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure everything worked before I started ripping out stuff. Um, got my three relay harness, uh, hooked up to the fans, put the power in the ground off of my little jumper pack that I keep in the truck. Um, and pretty much what it's going to do is... When the computer grounds the green wire, it's going to cause the fans, both fans to run at low speed because it's going to be in series. So you'll get 6 volts to 1 fan, 6 volts to 1 fan. And then while that one's grounded and you hit the higher settings, higher temperature or higher pressure, and it's also going to ground the blue wire and then you get both fans running in parallel so I don't know if I can do this with one hand but I'm going to hook this up to ground got two of my fans going at low speed And then when I hook both of them up to ground, the two fans at turbo speed. Holy smoke! Okay. So all, all that showed was that. Relays, fuses, wiring, everything checks out to work good. And I just wanted to make sure because I ordered these fans in January of 2022. And it is December. And it's going in now.
Okay guys, this is the part where we take off the fan. I just wanted to address this because I see people all over the YouTube that still can't get this fan off without doing crazy stuff, so I'm going to show you how I do it. 36 millimeter wrench. And it doesn't work only for um, Silverados and LS motors, but there's a lot of fans that are 36. That's why I have this wrench. Okay. Kind of lean it forward. You make sure the belt's still on. Now all I'm gonna do is use this rubber mallet and whack this thing as hard as I can and it should spin free. It might not work the first or second or third time but it'll work. You gotta shock the bolt off. Here we go. Okay, that never do nothing. You gotta turn it. Yep. Forget to make a sound effect, kind of helps. Oof. See that? Oh, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Oof. Oh, see? That's why we use rubber mallet. It's in case I miss and whack something else. This is the same way you put it on too. So I know I put it on good. Dumbass that put the thing on so tight. Oh, there we go. That was the one. You can tell because it just went with the blade. <laughs> oh, my back was getting sore already. Whew. I forget how many hits that was, but... That was a lot. I think that was the most ever. Or maybe I'm just getting soft. Probably. Alright. Got the fan off.
possible thumbnail. What I'm gonna do is change out, if you look straight down, we're looking at the top of that high pressure switch and I'll be replacing it with a high pressure sensor. You want the GM part number? Whoa! Thank you, neighbors with the loud stereo. But yeah, here's the GM part number. Like I said, it came in that kit from BP Automotive. But um, yeah, it's right down here. It's connected to the high pressure hose on the from the compressor to the condenser. So um. I gotta put the camera down to do that. Okay, so there you see the new connector on top of the new switch. Uh, here's the old connector capped off. So it's just gonna hang out over there. And then I went and routed the harness right there, zip tied it to this other harness, and then these three wires are gonna go into the ECM right there. So I'll just leave that there for now, and uh. I'm going to take the time to admire this beautiful engine. Still going good. After I did the cam swap, guys, I... Um, I drive it every day. It's been a year. I drive it to work every single day, about 30 miles. Well, not every day, but... Monday to Friday. About 30 miles round trip. Get about 16 and a half miles to the gallon and it's still running cherry okay let's get the fan in Hear that? <clears throat> it's not even New Year's Eve yet, but here in Hawaii, they've been lighting fireworks since the Halloween. She just falls into place like it should. 
if you look down it slides right into where the fan shroud would slide into see that the two clips on the radiator right where the fan shroud would be sticks in there and then we just gotta bolt it up so like I said this is where the original 28 inch radiator bolted to 34 inch and that's it let's get this thing bolted in that's why you need those uh you need these eight millimeter by 1.25 by 30 I got some bigger washers just so that it covers it better. Even took the hose clamper thing off the upper fan shroud. And it fits right in here. Voila! Check it out guys. Looks like it would from the factory. Now we got so much room for activities in the front here. I mean, don't mind the dirt. Like I said, I drive her every day. That's why she dirty. But back to the fans. Yes, sir. Now, all we gotta do is wire this bad baby up. Let's go. Okay, so I'm just gonna start taking apart some stuff, getting it out of the way, just so we get more room. Just like that. So what I did was I took out the bracket and the battery from over here, and then I took out this bracket that comes from the firewall to the fender. And um, this is what it looks like. I really do want to change this battery tray, but man, I have a new one. I have a new one. Oh, right here, see? I told you guys, I wasn't lying. But in order to get that thing out, these bolts are so far rusted and pretty much I know I can take out these two but the rest of them the heads are just gone and long story short I'm gonna have to end up cutting this thing out which I don't want to do that now so I don't even know why I'm talking about it now the reason why I chose this harness because there's actually a spot for it right here See this, this tab right here. So then this tab, this tab will slide right on that tab. And it just looks like it came from the factory like that. Like the whole theme of this video. Now, one thing is that's a little bit more work. So if you just buy any of those three relay harnesses from um, Amazon. I'll, I'm a, I'll link one from Amazon, even though that's not the one I'm using, but you can get those. Then you don't gotta take this whole thing apart. 
You could probably just mount it to the outside of the cover here. And then this is the where you want to mount your um, main power. So this cable is going to go here. But um, yeah, so I'm going to set this up and then you'll see what it looks like. So I got the fuse and relays in this section where it's supposed to be. Around the wires underneath this box. Here's the red wire. Straight to the battery. This is the battery positive right there. So this post is straight to the battery. As far as the ground, if you follow the ground wire from the battery, then there's this extra wire coming off of it and where this goes to the frame I bolted the ground wire for this harness right to that so I know I got good battery and good ground now as far as the signal wires I got two I got two for the fans low speed and high speed and then and then I got these other three for the AC sensor and here's my beautiful cheat sheet if you wanna screenshot this do so now okay and then I went and circled the the red because I, I didn't want to go back and forth and look C2 red so I just circled it red alright so now the cover for the PCM just pops off um, I don't think I need to remove it from the mount I'm just gonna disconnect the connectors it's held in by 7 millimeter and then I will get these tapped in off you actually kind of kind of got to grab it like a man and pull good and I actually I'm surprised I didn't break any of those little tabs so when I look at my diagram I got blue 42 is the green one so blue 42 there's nothing in there so I got blue 42, there's the green wire, 49 is a black, and 8 is the gray. Surprisingly on this blue connector, all of those slots are empty. So we should be good. At least they're all on this side, because I got to take this blue thing off.
Why is there not so many wires and it looks like a million wires on the back? Okay, blue 42, green wire. So I'm gonna grab the green wire. Here it is coming through. Bango locked blue forty two. Now on the AC one, I got a Blue 49, and that's the black wire. There's like some kind of like silicone or something in the hole already. So I'm using this tool to just like open it up first. Then when it's open, black wire, blue 49. comes through damn you hear that click okay you guys get the idea I'll finish up the rest Woo. all right so it's the next day um, what I have left to do is just put back the battery and the covers and then we can get into the programming so this is where I'm at right now as you can see, I got all the wires tied up underneath the fan. And then when you come over to the PCM, I know it's a little dark, but I got everything cleaned up. None of the looms are sticking out or anything. I, got, I taped up the wires and just zip tied them together for the clean install. So now I just got to put back this cover and where is this cover? Oh, I tried to order one off eBay that has the actual cutout with the cover, but freaking seller just sent me another one of these. The hell am I supposed to do with that? So. I got my refund or whatever, and then um, I guess I just got a spare one. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap this stuff on. It's just gonna be an inconvenience because every time I wanna check the, f the fuses and relays for the fan, I just gotta pop this whole thing off, but whatever. I can still switch it out in the future. Stay tuned. Now I gotta program the PCM to work with all the wiring that we added with the sensor and the fans. So to do that, I got my HP tuners plugged into the port, got it on my laptop, and I'll show you guys what I gotta do to make the fans work. Okay, so I got in my HP tuners. Let me turn off this fan. I got in my HP tuners. And right now it's reading the current file. Um, as you can see, probably just fast forward this stuff. Okay, so it's wrapping up reading this system. So what we're gonna do now is go into the systems. So remember I told you we got rid of that recirc op recirc option, so I'm gonna change it to fan two. And for type fitted, we're gonna go to analog. Um, let's see. Disable. 
I'm going to leave it at that. Come to the fans. And we got two fans. So it should have said no fans, but mine already says two fans. And then these settings. I kind of like it like that already. Um, these will be maxed out. These I'm going to leave at zero. Um, AC temp on. Copying some numbers that I found on a couple of videos that was programming, uh, like it was from a stock truck. So this one we're going to change to 220. And then disable at 150. This one is like I don't know what some of this stuff does, but I mean it, it tells you on the bottom down here, but yeah. So first stage fan many time when enabled fan will run for at least this time so 90 okay let me come up to the fan 2 205 195. Um, this one's going to be 10. 230. Two. Okay, and then minute time, 210, 210 seconds, then AC disabled, AC fans disabled, 45, so if we're going 45, we don't need the fans on. Um, you see how it's all red? Those are the changes I made. And now what I have to do is click on this right vehicle. And it's going to write calibration. Or I usually just hit right entire. Um... Right, and this is going to be flashing the PCM with the new settings. Oh, I heard my fuel pump turn on. Right, completed, and that's it, guys. Bingo, bango, pickle, mango. We should be good now. Let's turn the key on and see if it works. Now, I'm going to switch to the scanner of HP tuners, and I'm going to start the car. Oh, so we can go, I can go into this, um, tools, I think it is, oh, not tools, vehicle, no vehicle, where is it? Vehicle controls and speed functions. And I can actually turn the fans on from here. So I can go onto my fans. Fan one on. 
You hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can hear it. And turn it off. Fan two on. Oh, I guarantee you can hear that. This turbo fan mode. Two fans. Yes, sir. Okay. I just wanted to do that because everybody that does this swap, they always do that. But I don't know why. Anyway, I'm going to turn the car on. Oh. When you disconnect the battery and especially the computer, it's gonna take a couple cranks to get this thing started, so don't be scared, okay? Okay, don't be scared, I told you. Oh man! Hear that? Seems like it's working. The AC on. Well, the fan's not on yet. So it says fan one is on, the AC is on, it's nice and cool. Um, oh yeah, low speed. Um, I probably gotta drive it around. Right. So, engine cooling temp is about 196. What is the other fan supposed to turn on? 200, I think. So I just came back from the test drive, and everything's working as how it should. Uh, my truck hardly gets over 200 i think the high speed fan supposed to kick on at like 205 but for the most part uh the truck's running under 200 right about 196 198 and then of course on the freeway when i hit 45 then the fan shut off but the like i said the temperature never does climb and that's with the ac on it all the whole time and the best part is when i come to a traffic light and or I'm just you know stopped the AC is nice and cold and everything's working as it should but um I'm just gonna continue to monitor it like I said I drive my truck every day so we'll see what happens and if anything else I can uh, update you guys but that's gonna be a wrap for this video um, I hope you guys liked it it was pretty fun making like I said um I just want to say thank you to everybody don't forget if you're not yet please subscribe and uh, if you're sitting next to your friend right now take your friend's phone and go on youtube go to my channel and subscribe as well and uh you know we're just trying to grow in this youtube algorithm but um that's so we got happy new year hope everyone stays safe and until next time, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.